Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss diluted earnings per share, specifically using the what if method. When we say diluted earnings per share, we have to compare and contrast diluted to basic earnings per share, which we talked about in the prior session. So if you don't understand basic earnings per share, Right now, stop, go to the prior session, learn about basic earnings per share, because before we compute diluted earnings per share, we have to compute basic earnings per share. Now, when do we have diluted earnings per share? When do we have to do, when do we have to compute this earnings per share that's diluted? It's when we have a capital, complex capital structure. What is that? Well, it's when we have dilutive securities. What are dilutive securities? Convertible securities, such as convertible bonds, convertible preferred stock, options, warrant, or any other rights that if converted, if turned into common stock, will dilute the shares. So if converted or exercised, there is a potential of dilution effect. Dilution means it potentially could reduce your earnings per share. That's, that's what we mean by potentially, because sometimes, if exercised, they may not dilute, they may increase, and we'll work an example, don't worry about that. So this is what, how we have to compute diluted earnings per share. First, we have to compute basic earnings per share, the basic EPS, then, which is equal to net income minus preferred dividend divided by the weighted average number of shares outstanding, and this is the basic, and this is what we learned in the prior session, and that's why I said, if you're not comfortable with basic, don't try to don't try to compute diluted. Then from this formula, we are going to deduct the convertible effect. Then we're going to deduct the options and the warrant effect. And this is what we're going to be learning in this session. Once we, once we deduct those two, after we compute basic earnings per share, it's going to give us dilutive earnings per share. And we only report the dilutive if, if, if the dilutive is lower than the basic. If we computed the dilutive and it's higher than the basic, we just don't report anything. We only report if dilutive. If it's not dilutive, we call it it's anti-dilutive. Now we have two methods in to compute the dilutive earnings per share. We have the what if method and we have the treasury method. In this session, we use the if converted method, what if or if converted method. The if converted method is used when we convert convertible bonds and when we convert convertible preferred stock. We're going to start by looking at convertible bonds. We're going to assume that the conversion happened at the beginning of the period, unless the bonds were issued during the year. In other words, we're going to assume that if we have a bond, if this is year one and this is year two, if we have any bond outstanding, convertible bond outstanding as of the beginning of the year, we assume the conversion took place here. Now, if the bonds were issued during the year, we're going to assume the conversion took place as of the issue date. And we're always going to add the interest net of tax. Why? Because the interest expense, when we convert, if we assume we converted the bond, it means the company lost the interest deduction. When we add, when we add back the interest deduction, it's going to be added net of tax. And this concept in accounting is important, net of tax. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example to show you all the computation that takes place. But but before we look at an example, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course, nor your accounting course. My motto is saving CPA candidate and accounting student one at a time by providing you additional resources for your accounting courses. This is a list of all the accounting courses that I cover. This is actually a partial list. Lectures, multiple choice, true, false, additional exercises. My CPA material is aligned with your backer, Wiley, Gleam, and Roger. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to 1,500 plus AI CPA previously released questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so and take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube. It helps me a lot. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, on Reddit, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to grow my Instagram followers. The best way to illustrate the concept of diluted earnings per share is to actually look at an example. Adam Company has net income of 400000 for the year and a weighted average number of common share outstanding during the period, 1 million. So I'm, I'm giving you the weighted average number of shares. You don't have to compute this. We learned how to compute this in the prior session. Also, Adam has 1,006,000 convertible bond that is converted into 300,000 common stock and it's outstanding as of January 1st. We all, Adam Company also had a million 10% convertible bond 
into 400,000 common stock. And those bonds, the 10% were issued during April 1st. It looks like interest rate went up. And tax rate is 21%. So the first thing we do, as I showed you, we compute basic earnings per share, basic EPS. How do we compute basic EPS? Well, the good thing is we don't have any preferred dividend. It's net income my, divided by minus zero preferred dividend just to have the complete formula, divided by the weighted average number of shares, basic earnings per share is 30 pennies. Now we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make an adjustment to the numerator. We're gonna make an adjustment to the denominator to convert the bonds because we have two bonds that are convertible. Here's what's gonna happen. First, the, the first $1 million bonds, they are converted into 300,000 shares and they were outstanding as of January 1st. What does that mean? It means I'm gonna have to de add to the denominator 300,000 for these bonds. Also, I have another 1 million 10% convertible bond into 400. Be careful, those bonds were issued on April 1st. Issued April 1st, it means they have to be prorated because they were not outstanding for the whole year. So here, here's what you have to do. You have 400,000 shares and you're gonna have to multiply them 400,000 shares and you have to multiply them by all of April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December by 9-12 of the year. Why 9-12? Because we have, to, we have to start counting as of April 1st. So simply put, those are converted if we prorate them to 300,000. So we have 300,000 from the first bond and 300,000 from the second bond. Well, it's a coincidence. I should have used different numbers, but that's fine. Okay, but near it should be clearly because I don't want you to think it's always 300,000. So the 1 million shares, the denominator, we're going to add to the denominator 600,000 new shares. So the new weighted average for the diluted is 1.6 million. Now we have to adjust the numerator. What do we have to add the, to the numerator? If we convert the bond, we don't have to pay interest. Well, that's good news. So we have a million dollar worth of bonds times 6%. If we convert them, we're going to save 60,000. That's our savings. That's the excellent news. We're going to reduce our expense by 60,000. The bad news is we lost a deduction of 60,000. As a result, we are going to be losing some tax savings. What does that mean? Because you reduce your expenses, your tax goes up. Now, because you reduce your expenses by 60,000 and the tax rate is 21%, simply put, let me show you what's going to happen. Let me get the calculator ready here. So if we take 60,000, 60,000 times 0.21. So you lost in tax in tax in tax savings 12,600. So you you saved 60,000, you lost 12,600. Your total net savings are how much? So 60,000 No. Uh, 60,000 minus 12,000 my fat fingers they keep 12,600 it's for so your net saving is 47,400 this is basically how I did it I think I took 60,000 in interest saved I my tax losses were my because my income went up my Taxes went up by 12,600. Interest net of tax is 47,400. Now, the formula to convert some number from tax, from, from gross to tax, to net of tax is taking that number, 60,000, multiplied by one minus, one minus the tax rate, and it's going to give us 47,400, which is the same thing. I broke it down into two steps to show you what net of tax is. But the formula is you take the interest multiplied by one minus the tax rate to find out the savings net of tax. And we'll do the same thing. So simply put, what we have to do, we have to add to the numerator 47,400. Now we're also going to save the interest on the 10% bond. Well, we have a million dollar times 10% times 912. Why 912? Because the bond was issued in April. So we only save interest of 75,000 gross. Then we multiply the 75,000 by the tax rate. We lose in tax savings 15,750. The interest net of tax is 59,525. Or we can take 75,000 times one minus the tax rate to come up with a figure 
automatically. Now we are ready to compute our diluted earnings per share. So we have to add to the numerator 59,250. Now we take 400,000 plus the interest of, on the first bond net of tax plus the interest on the second bond net of tax. And the denominator will take a million plus 300,000 for the first bond, the 6% bond, 300,000 for the 10% bond. And we find out that this is diluted. We find out that the diluted EPS is 31 pennies, almost 32 pennies, which is diluted because it went down from, it went down basically from 40 pennies to 31 pennies. Now this is how we convert a bond. Let's assume we have a convertible preferred stock. At the beginning of the year, Adam has 40,000 shares of 10% convertible cumulative preferred 50 par value. Each convertible, each share is convertible into 10 shares of common stock. Net income for the year of ha is a half a million. There were 750,000 shares outstanding during the year. The first thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to compute basic earnings per share. And that's easy. My net income is 1.5 million. My common stock is 700,000. Great, I gave you easy numbers. It's $2 per share wrong there's a trick here and i did this on purpose the reason it's wrong because what i did is i kind of walked over this but i told you you have a cumulative preferred stock if the preferred stock is cumulative you always have to deduct the preferred dividend for that year well the preferred dividend how much does this stock paid it has a par value of 50 dollars the rate is 10 percent times 10 percent this stock pays five dollar per share we have forty thousand shares so this preferred stock paid dividend of two hundred thousand therefore we're going to take 1.5 million minus two hundred thousand notice i tried to trick you divided by seven hundred and fifty thousand share so the basic earnings per share is one dollar and seventy three cent remember if it's a cumulative you always deduct that year worth of dividend if it's non-cumulative you have to see whether they declared it or not now we have to compute the dilutive earnings per share. Well, what's gonna happen is this. If those preferred stock are, are converted, we have 40,000 of them, and each one is converted into 10 shares, we're gonna add to the denominator 400,000. Okay, what's gonna happen too? If we convert, we no longer have to pay the preferred dividend, we add 200,000 to the net income. Therefore, notice, net income will stay the same. So the diluted earnings per share is 1.5 million minus the preferred dividend 200,000 plus the preferred dividend eliminated 200,000 simply put back to net income, simply put the, the numerator is net income because we're not paying anything to the preferred dividend. If they convert, we don't have to pay them. Then 750,000 plus 400,000 is 1,150,000. Now the diluted earnings per share which is indeed diluted is one dollar and thirty pennies diluted why because it went down from dollar seventy three to dollar thirty which we consider it diluted now let's change the scenario a little bit and assume each share is converted into only two shares of common stock so rather than ten we're gonna say it's only two shares let's do the let's do the computation again again the numerator is only net income 1.5 million minus 200,000 plus 200,000. And if we have 40,000 shares converted into two shares of common stock, we're gonna add to the denominator 80,000 shares. Now, when we compute the new EPS, it's $1.80, actually it's anti-dilutive. Well, if the preferred shareholder convert, the regular shareholders will be better because the earnings per share will go up. Therefore, we don't report anti-dilutive. Simply put, we do this computation, we throw it in the garbage. We don't say anything. We don't report it. Now, the best way to learn this is to go to farhatlectures.com and work additional multiple choice questions. Look at additional practice exercises. Don't shortchange yourself. I give you additional resources to help you succeed on your CPA exam and your accounting courses. Invest in your career. Invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.